What's up everybody, I'm Ryan and this is Haskell Monads in 8 Minutes. So monads are a pretty deep topic which I could spend a long time explaining but I only have 8 minutes so I'll only cover the uh, bare essentials that you need to know to understand what a monad is and what it's used for. So monads are used for getting imperative behavior out of your functional programs. So operations with side effects like I.O., uh, failure at runtime, uh, changing the state of um, objects, uh, non-deterministic operations. Uh, you can imagine that you know a change in global state might change the behavior of your functions given the same input. So you know f of three might yield five and then another time might yield uh, seven, you know, depending on if f uses some global state that you have that, that, that could be changing. So monads allow you to isolate the computations themselves from these side effects and this non-deterministic behavior. Um, thus, you know, the computations will still remain purely functional. So here are some examples of Haskell monads. Uh, I.O. maybe, list, yes, list is a monad. Um, you'll see why in a minute. Uh, and state, which is used for emulating mutability. So what is a monad? Well, monad is a type class. So, so uh, here are some examples of like more basic type classes that we've seen. Um, EQ, which supports the uh, double equals, the uh, test for equality operation. Um, ORD, which supports ordering, you know, less than and greater than. Um, so if we look at the type of double equals, we see we just have an A to an A to a bool. So if A is equal to A, if, if, if this, this first variable is equal to this second variable, um, their types have to be equal, of course, um, then you get, a tr you get true. If they're not equal, you get false. So A is an EQ if it supports this uh, double equals co uh, comparison operator. So how double equals itself is implemented is really up to the concrete type itself. You can imagine that you know, string double equals is different from int double equals, but if we abstract to the type class, um, if we abstract to the type class level, we can see that um, double equals is going to look like this for all of the types that uh, implement it. So the monad type class supports the binding operation, which is this esoteric looking operator, greater than, greater than equals, um, and the return operation, which is essentially a wrapper, which I'll talk about. Other things are also supported and may be contained in a monad's definition. However, binding and return are necessary and also sufficient to define a monad. So if we look at the type of bind, we see that it's in, uh, of type MA to function that takes an A and gives you an MB to MB. So what is M here? M is the monad. Um, and MA is the monadic value. You can, you can think of you know, A as just some regular type, like an in integer or a float or a char. Um, which is wrapped by M, the monad itself. So M can be thought of as kind of a box or a container for, for A, this, this, this is more basic type. Um, so we, you can look at these examples on here. You have IOA, maybe A, the list containing A. So this list containing A is not list of type A. It's a list containing a single value A. So we take an A, let's say it's a float, which is like, you know 1.0 or something, and we box it in a list. Um, so notice how this 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 box this list is just like maybe an IO it's just kind of like a wrapper. So bind is an operator which takes an MA and a function that takes an A and gives you an MB and sort of shoves MA into that function, right? Shoves MA into that function or takes or rather maybe you know takes A out of its box M and does some computations with it in this function A to MB and this function gives you back an MB from that A. So the value of bind is in this new monadic value, MB. So essentially what uh, bind does is unpacks monadic values, performs some computation on their insides, and then repacks the result back into the same monad. So this function, um, this, this function in the middle here that bind takes as a uh, parameter um, just computes something with its input and then shoves it back into a monad. And then bind gives you um, that monadic value back. So a single bind call is probably a, a pretty simple computation. However, many of them can be chained together with, you know, think functional composition um, to make arbitrarily complex computations. So pulling A up here, oops, pulling A up here outside of M and doing computations just on A kind of allows you to isolate the computations from its uh, uh, side effects and non-determinism, you know, among other things we want to avoid in our functional programs. So the second operation supported by monads is this uh, return operation, which is pretty simple. It's just a, a wrapper function. So you give return a, it's a, you give re you give return an a, and it'll give you back an ma, a packed value. It'll put a in the box in the in the box for you and give you back the box with a in it. So this is a bit abstract. Remember, um, we're only looking at the definition of these operators um, in the monad type class itself. So how these are actually implemented is up to the concrete type, you know, like what we've shown with double equals. We have uh, double equals for string, 
and uh, double equals for a float or int is gonna they're, they're gonna be different. They're gonna be making kind of different sort of comparisons, right? So I have an example, uh, a couple of examples here to kind of illustrate this. So maybe is a uh, is a monad. And if we look at the, this monadic definition for maybe, you know, and don't forget that bind is an, is an infix operator. So um, maybe x is either just x or it's nothing. Just x or it's nothing. So 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 what is it? What what is that? What does that mean here? So nothing is a monad, right? It's just it's it's no value whatsoever, but it's still a monad. It's a box with nothing in it. Just x is you know just is our box, and x is the singular item in the box, right? So maybe is either a box with nothing in it or a box with one thing in it, right? Um, and our box with one thing in it is called just, and our box with nothing in it is called nothing. So to return x, right, we have this uh, wrapping operation here. So to wrap x in, in, in a maybe box, right, we wrap it in just. So just x, right? A maybe box can mean just or it can be nothing. Just x or nothing. So we wrap it with the just, this, this just um, operation. So if we, if we want to define bind for maybe, we need to define it both for, sorry, we need to define it both for nothing and for just x because there's two possibilities in the, uh, of values that maybe can have. So when we bind with nothing and f, some function f, we get nothing back, right? So f, a function f applied to nothing will give you nothing, right? So if we bind <clears throat> just x with f, all we do is we pull x out of the box just and we apply f to x and then we put f of x back in the box. That's all we do. It's really, it's, it's really that simple. So if we look at lists, um, return and bind are defined a little differently, right? So return x is just a, you know, a single value x can be of any type, and we put x into a list, a single element list. We just wrap x in that single element list. Um, and bind is defined for lists. Um, L, you know, this list L, bound to f, maps f over L, right? So we grab individual values out of L, and we apply f to, the, to L, right? And we return that value, which gives us a bunch of single element lists, f of l, or f of every value in l, and then we concatenate all those single element lists together, right? That's what this concat map does, which gives us the bind operation for the list. So here's an example function that adds two maybe ints, and, and just ignore this part up here. Just look at the type maybe int to maybe int to maybe int. So what this does is it, is it adds two values of type maybe int, and um, it extracts x if mx is not nothing, extracts y if my is not nothing, and it wraps the value x plus y if you do not encounter nothing that time, which we you know wrapping x plus y gives you maybe x plus y. Otherwise, you know, we don't get anything back. It's, it'll stop short uh, at nothing. And here's a, a more idiomatic way to do this. You can see that this kind of resembles an imperative program, right? x, y, and return x plus y. All right, I'm at eight minutes. I really got to stop. Thanks.